Sometimes when you're driving, the biggest danger on the road is not necessarily other drivers, but potentially pedestrians and cyclists. So with this in mind, I'm going to share with you now some great tips to help you prepare for that danger. If you would like to support me here on this YouTube channel, you can do so by making a voluntary donation by PayPal. Um, I have received quite a bit of support over the last number of years and I really appreciate it. Links will be in the description and in the first pinned comment if you would like to show your appreciation for all these wonderful free videos. And thank you in advance. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and you can also click the bell notification as well where you can be notified whenever I upload a new driving lesson video. So very soon I'm going to show you some footage of some reckless pedestrians and cyclists that I filmed out on the road there recently. But first of all, as a learner driver, you need to be able to plan ahead and read the road ahead. So with that in mind, let's have a look at this crossroads here. So I'm approaching this crossroads on the uphill and in some ways the key area is about 15 or 20 meters from the stop line or the yield line. Now I know there's a stop and a yield here, but if ever there's a contradiction between the two, just go with the stop line or the stop sign is better. Uh, particularly because it's on a hill anyway and I know this junction um, as I approach it I will see that it's blind um, it's on a hill and there's parked cars either side so I'm not even too concerned about the fact that it was yield I know I have to stop here because I can't really see very much when I'm at the line so as I was saying when you're about 15 or 20 meters out you can analyze and look at the situation and you can get some key information that's going to help you both at the junction and slightly after the junction. So at this crossroads here you'll see that the main thing is to give way to traffic on the main road. So I'm leaning forward and creeping out to get a better view. I have to use the handbrake when I stop here because it's, it's a stop sign on the hill. Now I'll be going straight and because I'm going straight, I'm going to be crossing two lanes, so that means I have to get extra looks left and right, just like I would if I was taking a right turn. So it's very important to be observant here. I can see the sign across the way there as well, warning me of the potential of children playing. So that's going to be on my mind as well. And I'll notice that it's a bit staggered, so the junction I'm going to is a little bit to the right of where my car is positioned. I can also see that the next road I'm going on is straight, so it's uphill. So I may need some extra acceleration there on that next road. And there's also some hatched lines there as well. So that makes it even more staggered. I have to make a good effort to avoid those hatched lines there because you're not meant to drive or stop in those. And further on up the hill then, I'm going to come to a parked car. Now it's just a single parked car on the uphill. And you'll see that I need to be planning ahead here as well for any potential danger. So we notice that there's a, a gap on the left. So I'm going to watch out for that gap to see if there's any people or animals or children coming by there. I may be able to see through the windows as well. And if you look at the underside of the car also, I'm also scanning that quickly just to make sure that there's no footsteps there uh, that could ultimately turn into some pedestrians. My aim is to move out early and gradually and not to zigzag and make any uneven movements uh, as I'm overtaking. I'm doing this because pedestrians can sometimes come out of nowhere. As you're about to see here now, as I'm coming down this hill, there's a couple of parked vehicles on the left, and you're going to see a pedestrian there now just emerge. Now there was no danger there, the pedestrian wasn't running across the road, and I was in a good position that I could see him, and I could more or less maintain my position because I was keeping such a good distance from the parked cars. But it just goes to show that sometimes pedestrians can emerge uh, from parked cars or parked vans, particularly if they're taller vehicles. So you have to be alert and be vigilant in these cases. Here then I'm driving on some narrow streets here and there's some parked cars on the left and I'm going to come up to a junction very soon. But keep an eye on this person here in the motorized wheelchair. Now, why he's using his wheelchair on the road is a mystery to me. There's two perfectly good footpaths either side, well marked out, but he decides anyway that he prefers to drive on the road. So as I get closer to the junction you'll see that he'll disappear behind the parked vehicles but he's going to re-emerge very soon and you're going to notice that he's going to beckon me on. 
So this is very dangerous and very reckless and careless behaviour because he's beckoning me on here and if I was a nervous or inexperienced driver and I thought he was doing his good deed for today, I would probably just go ahead there and I would potentially pull out in front of oncoming vehicles because I don't have the right of way here. This is a blind junction. Um, I cannot see very much to the right and this guy here is beckoning me out into busy traffic which could cause a crash or an accident. What you need to do here is to judge every situation for yourself and do not rely on others to beckon you out and to decide whether you are going to go or not. So if we have a look at that junction again, just as this person is waving his hand to try and push me out onto the road, I notice that there's a flash of light over here on the window on the street here. So that tells me that there is a car coming up here. Uh, as I'm noticing that and as the car is coming up, this guy is still waving his hand trying to beckon me out onto a busy road. Completely reckless and careless carry on. And this is why you don't beckon others out onto the road and it's why you shouldn't rely on others that are trying to wave you on. Analyze and judge the situation for yourself because the only person you can trust in these situations is yourself. So we'll be moving on to dealing with some cyclists now very soon but as I'm coming up to this traffic lights here I'm going to show you again how important it is to scan the junction ahead because it can give you a good preview of what you might meet in say 20 or 30 or 40 seconds into the future. So as I'm coming up here I can see that there's a cyclist going from right to left there. Now I think I was going right at this junction, the cyclist was going left but that doesn't matter. If I was going left it's good to know that in about half a minute's time I may well meet that cyclist further down. Just like I'm aware of the pedestrian there as well who's just who just went around the corner as well. So when you read the road ahead and don't focus on the one thing too much, it can give you a better overall idea of what you might face in the future. You can't focus on just the process of stopping here. I mean, you have to stop if it's a red light. You have to slow down and get down the gears. But don't put all your focus on that. Make sure to scan the road and you might get some key information that's going to help you in the next stage of your driving. So let's look at an example of uh, how to deal with a cyclist here typically. So this is a cyclist and this is the car that's about to overtake him and this yellow car is potentially uh, an oncoming car here. So the most important thing is the driver of the red car first of all must not focus fully on the cyclist. Yes, be aware of the cyclist. Be aware of any hand signals, be aware of his actions, be alert to all those things, but don't put all your focus on the cyclist. You also have to be aware of the road ahead, uh, any oncoming cars, are there bends up ahead, is there junctions up ahead? Be aware of the cyclist, he may turn left or may look to turn right up ahead. So I would go as far as to say that you nearly need to be almost looking at your cyclist nearly in your peripheral vision, if that makes sense. Um, because you also need to be aware of so many other things up ahead. Also, for example, it's important that you're a good distance here from the cyclist. So you need to be close enough that you can stop just in case the cyclist were to fall off or, or cross the road suddenly. But you also need to be close enough that you can start and finish your overtaking manoeuvre in a safe and practical manner. In this case, it's very important because sometimes you may have a limited opportunity, a limited time frame to get the overtaking maneuver done. So it's important that you're able to position yourself properly and don't be afraid to give it a bit of acceleration to get the overtaking maneuver done safely. Uh, always make sure you check your mirrors on the way out. So that would be the middle and the right mirror here. Make sure you give the cyclist at least a meter and a half and then make sure you can see the cyclist in your left mirror just as you come back in. It should be easier to overtake a cyclist on the uphill because you can generate more power with your accelerator and the cyclist is probably going to be tired. But just be careful if the cyclist is on the uphill, he may weave left or right due to the pressures of the hill and due to the tiredness. So just uh, just be aware of that one. Uh, sometimes on the downhill, it can be trickier overtaking cyclists because they can pick up speed um, very, very abruptly because they're going down the hill and there might not be any need to overtake uh, a person on a bike going down the hill because it might not be worth the risk because 
as I said, they'll be picking up a good bit of speed anyway. So it's probably going to be easier to do it on the uphill in some ways. Try your best to judge the speed of oncoming cars. So I mentioned about being aware of oncoming cars. So you can kind of judge the speed of this car. And if this car is far away, you should, I mean, you should be able to make a judgment then on whether or not to pull out. But if he's closer and he looks like he's picking up a good bit of speed, you don't want to risk overtaking the cyclist in that case. Always remember, only overtake if it's safe, if you can see enough ahead of you to do so. And don't forget to check the mirrors on the way out and on the way back in. Here's a still shot of a cyclist on a road in Wexford recently. And I want to give you some quick tips on how to overtake a cyclist. And one of the most important things I can tell you when you are deciding whether or not to overtake the cyclist is don't put all your focus only on the cyclist. That's not going to do you any good and you're creating a narrow zone of focus and a narrow area of concentration if you do that. You also need to be aware of the oncoming traffic. You need to be aware of any parked cars. You need to be very vigilant for hills. So it might be easier to drive down a hill but it could be harder to overtake a cyclist down a hill because the cyclist is going to pick up a lot of speed going down the hill. So be aware of all those things. Um, You'll see in this picture as well, there's a couple of bends here, uh, so you'd always be careful about overtaking uh, a cyclist on a bend. There's also a bus stop there as well, and the cyclist looks like he's kind of getting ready to move around the bus. So you definitely would not be overtaking a cyclist in this situation, because it's just not practical, it's not required, it doesn't make any sense. As I'm driving along this road here, then I'm coming to a roundabout, but I'm going to notice some cyclists on my right. Three cyclists actually here. And you'll notice that these cyclists are riding on the wrong side of the road on the footpath. Even though there's a solid white line cycle lane there, which must be used by cyclists if um, it's there, but they obviously decided not to use it. They're cycling on the footpath instead, which is not the correct thing to do. They're not wearing high-vis vests. They don't appear to have lights or helmets. So they're the type of cyclists that I would categorize as reckless and careless. These are the type of cyclists that might break a red light, might not stop at a stop sign, they might pull out um, without warning, they probably are the type that would take turns without using their hand signals. So they seem to be going the same way as I am to the right on the roundabout. So I'm going to be alert and vigilant here that these cyclists could be a factor in my driving up ahead. So I just need to be aware of them and be prepared that I might meet them further up. An important point on cyclists is that no two sets of cyclists are going to be the same. I always like to think of at least two categories of cyclists out there and we've probably seen them in the video here. The first category is this person here who was in the photo earlier. So if you have a look at this photo you'll see that this cyclist has all the gear on, the correct gear, he has a helmet, he has a light and he's a type that will obey the rules of the road, this type of cyclist is probably not going to break red lights. Well, at least not normally anyway, I would assume. The other type of cyclists that we saw um, at the roundabout there, these are the more careless, reckless type, who don't wear the proper gear, no lights, no helmets, probably the types that wouldn't even know their hand signals, let alone use them. And they're the type that you'd want to be aware of and watching out for because these are the type of cyclists that could cause you problems up ahead. They're probably more likely to cause problems than the than this guy in the picture who we saw initially. This is just general advice about cyclists. All cyclists are different, they react differently, but it's important not to tar them all with the one brush. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I hope to be back with more videos and more live streams very, very soon. Thanks for watching and stay safe.